All right, great. Let's, uh, happy new year. Happy new year, everyone. Let's start this new year off well. Let's start this new year off well. So what I'm going to ask you to do, wherever you're at, in whatever room you're at, unless you're driving, <laughs> to close your eyes, and I want you to put your hand on your heart, and, and you're going to pray for, for your, yourself right now. You're gonna, I'm going to lead you in a very simple prayer to pray for yourself, to get the most out of this time and the, and the most out of this day. I want you to pray these simple words. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Teach me. Heal me. Help me. Guide me. And fill me with love, joy, hope, and peace as I listen now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you to start this new year. I bless you all now in the name of Jesus that you would know Jesus more deeply, that you would be healed in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, in your spirit, that you would know the guidance and help of God right now, and at this time you would experience the love of God, the joy of God, the hope that comes from the truth about God and the peace of God during this time. In Jesus' name, may it be. May it be for, for all of us now. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, that's free, that's fun, and that's powerful. So let's, let's start, we're starting the new year off right. Uh, at the one service gathering last October, that, that one time where we, we all were meeting with all the locations, our last Vision Sunday, I asked the question, what does charge mean for you? What does charge mean for you? And I've been really impressed with each location and so many different stories that I've heard of people leaning into that word for that, that last autumn season there. Or what does charge look like? Today at the beginning of the new year, I have a new word for us. I have a new question uh, stemming out from what I am convinced is God's word to us as a people, as a church going into 2021. The word that I have for you today is get ready. Get ready, and then the question is, what does get ready look like for you? What does get ready look like for you in your situation? What, in what ways might God be calling you to get ready for this new season in the world, for this new season in your life? Back in early December, I was, I was seeking God and, and praying and spending days just thinking, God, what is your word for us as a church? For, uh, for, for us as a people even during this season. And, and over the last month, he gave me three things. He gave me the word, get ready. He gave me the biblical context and understanding of what he, was, what he meant by the word, get ready, which is coming from the book of Joshua, and I'll talk about that more in a second. And then after a few weeks, he gave me a clarifying dream because I think I shifted a little bit towards optimism and he wanted me to be a little bit more uh, understanding the reality of it, and, and I'll say more about that later. But for now, the call is to get ready to get ready and ask ourselves the question, what does get ready look like for you? The very second verse in the book of Joshua reads this. Now then, you and all these people get ready. Get ready to cross. Battles were coming. Battles were coming for the people, but so was their future after the battles. The future was going to be good. It was going to be peaceful, but it, it, there was going to be battles between here and there. Last year was a year of great global shaking, fear, isolation, health issues, uh, financial issues. Last year was a year of, of waiting. Last year was a year of enduring. It was a rather unpleasant era for most people. And yes, we are beginning this year in very similar unpleasant, awful realities, but... God is calling us to get ready because, one, the battle isn't over yet, so get ready for the fight that's to come, and secondly, because a new era is actually coming, and so we need to get ready. We need to be strong for the days ahead and prepared to cross into the new era whenever it comes, whatever it looks like. Now, I understand that some of you feel a little bit burned from last year. And, and, and you're like, oh, Brian, this is, I was looking for something a little bit less, let's go for it, um, on Vision Sunday. <laughs> a 
like that's going to happen. But, but let, let, let's just say you were hoping for something like that. I understand. Maybe, maybe you're feeling burned from last year, job situation, health situation, grief situation, family situation, and, and, and maybe you expected uh, some answered prayers last year, and you're feeling a bit burned. You're feeling a bit disappointed. You're feeling the, some griefs from last year. I, I've heard from several people uh, throughout the different locations that, that they were expecting some prayers to be answered last year, especially flowing out of fasting week last year, and, and they didn't really come, up, come about, and so they're, they're feeling a little bit like shaken by that, a little, a little bit spiritually um, thrown by that. And I know that this isn't all of you, and I, it, it's just some of you. Um, I know some of you are eager and ready to, to go for it this year, but for those who are disappointed and thrown by some unanswered prayer from last year that you really felt like God had said that was going to be for that year, I have a theory. I have a theory. It's just a theory. It, it, it does not apply to, to everyone. But, but he, I have a theory about why so many answered, so many prayers were delayed in their answers. And again, it's not, it's not, it's not fully worked out, but, but I do believe that many of you did hear from God about timings, about, about things unfolding last year. And I believe that they're still coming, but I believe that they're delayed for one reason with four aspects to the reason. And the reason is there's an, there's an incredible spiritual war going on in our planet this year, and it has been unusually slanted in the enemy's favor. Why has it been slanted in the enemy's favor? Because fear levels in the planet have been super high, and faith levels have been shaken. And so that, 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 that impacts the dynamic. Fear high, faith low. Also, there has been the decimation of corporate worship on the planet, and that is not nothing. We're, it's forbidden in Scotland to gather and worship together. Uh, it, it is, it's been greatly reduced all around the world. Uh, that has a big impact. That has a big impact. Um, I, I'm thinking of, of Daniel chapter 10, 11, 12, where you've got, um, you've got this angel dispatched from, from the throne of heaven to bring a message to Daniel, and it's delayed. It's delayed for 21 days. Why? Because of the spiritual war taking place and because of the spiritual realities where Daniel is. And so the angelic messenger is delayed. He's still coming, but he's held up. He's delayed because of the spiritual war. And, and I, I, when you look at the Bible, there's two, the two main ways that God answers prayers are through angels and through people. And so if you've got the spiritual hostile reality going on because of lack of corporate worship and fear being high, and I, you know, I think the angels have been dispatched, but they could be held up a bit. And so there could be some delay in answered prayer. Again, this is just a, a theory, but also people are isolated from one another. That's the fourth thing. And so many answered prayers come through people, but people have been... Uh, kept away from each other. There's not the laying on of hands, activation of things, um, just the way, just the, the, the people interaction. So anyways, that is just a theory. That's just a free bonus. But if you're discouraged and you really feel shaken by unanswered prayer last year, I believe that that prayer is coming. I believe that those answers are about to unfold. And I view it a bit like a dam. That's, that, that the answered prayers have been held up because of the extremely, unusually hostile spiritual Realities going on in the, in the war, and yet as we move towards fear and away, move away from fear and towards faith and towards believing and continue to pray it through and, and, and participate in fasting and all that kind of stuff, the cracks are going to appear on the dam and the water, the, the answered prayers are going to start to trickle through and then rush through and then flood. That's my theory. <laughs> that, that, that's what I, I think is going on. Anyway, so be, be, be encouraged. Get ready. Uh, I, this next season, however long it is, I think we're going to see an unusual amount of catch-up answered prayers in, in this season. It's a theory, but may it be, right? May it be. Okay, uh, well, let's get back to Division Sunday. For now, I want to talk about how we get ready. How do we get ready for this next, the next era, the battles that are ahead, and, and the, the good future, whatever it will be and whenever it will be? Uh, for that, I want to remind us what we see in the book of Joshua. Uh, remember, the book of Joshua is this great transition from 40 years of awful, 40 years of death, 40 years of waiting. A and at the beginning of the book of Joshua, that season is coming to an end. And, and people are called to get ready because 
breakthrough is coming. Their, their future is coming. Battles are coming, but their future is coming. And they're, getting, they're to get ready for the, to go into the land that God's promised them. And I want to remind you, in the book of Joshua, the land didn't, didn't just fall in their lap. The, their la- the land just didn't fall in their lap as they, they just kind of sat there on the east. No, no, no. They only got as much of the good land as they took in faith and in obedience. Actually, they didn't end up with all that they were told to get. And, and you see that kind of by the end of the book of, of, of Joshua. But they still get a lot of things right, even, when, even if they don't get all that they were supposed to get. I, I see four helpful, clarifying questions from four helpful moments at the beginning of Joshua that will, that will help us think through this, what does it take to get ready? What does it take to get ready? We're called to get ready. What does that mean? What does that look like? Here's here's four questions. The first question that we're going to ask ourselves when it comes to getting ready is, what spiritual preparation do I need to make now to set me up for the year ahead? What spiritual preparation do I need to make now to set me up for the year ahead? Remember, before Jericho... Before their first battle, before that first victory, they have a moment at a place called Gilgal. Gilgal, where they stop and they deal with their past sin and disobedience and all the men get circumcised. Super party time. You you, you see, no one born after they left Egypt had gotten circumcised. And before they could take the land, they needed to get their lives back right with God. They need to get back in step with God. They'd heard about this at Mount Sinai 40 years earlier, but they needed to just get right and return to obedience. This is what it says in Joshua chapter 5 about this moment. It said in chapter 5 verse 8, it says, After the entire nation had been circumcised, they stayed where they were in the camp until they recovered. The Lord then said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the disgrace of Egypt from you. And, And then it goes on and on. God has great opportunities for you this year. But before you take another step, is there anything that you need to kind of deal with from the past? Any sins that you need to let go of? Any people you need to forgive? Any obedience you need to step into? Getting, getting ready means getting right with God. Getting ready means getting right with God and getting back in step with how he's called you to live, doing what he's called you to do, not doing what he's called you not to do. This isn't about guilt. I don't see any guilt in the story about Gilgal. I don't see God upset or anything. Like that. It's just get right time. It's just get right time. And it's, it's, there's, you know, for, for, for us as believers, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We, we just need to wake up and, and, and get back to it and, and kind of have our Gilgal moment so we can enter this season with God's favor, help, and blessing. I love it that our fasting week is coming up a week from now, time of spiritual preparation for the year ahead. These are Gilgal days. They're Gilgal days, days to get ready and get right with God as we move forward. Okay, so the first get ready question from Joshua is, what spiritual preparation do I need to make now to set me up for the year ahead? All of us can take a step forward. What might yours be? Question number two. What promises have you made to God and people that you need to remember and fulfill in this next season? Say that again. What promises have you made to God and people that you need to remember and fulfill in this next season? Some of you have made promises to God this past year or or in years past. Maybe things like, God, if you get me through this, I will. Or or if you answer this prayer, then, 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 then I will. Or if you help me at this moment, then I will. Or if you give me this job, I will. Then, or if you if you bring me a best friend or a spouse or, or somebody, then I, I will do this. And Sometimes, before we can move forward in receiving what God's next for us is, we need to go back and fulfill and keep promises that we've made to God and others in the past. Are there promises or words that you've said to someone that you've not yet acted on or, or still need to keep? Keeping your word even when it, when it hurts, that's how the godly are called to live. 
One of the most strange stories for me in the book of, there's two strange stories for me in the book of, uh, in the book of um, Joshua, uh, in the book of Joshua here, two stories that, that throw me off a bit. I mean, I get them, but they're, they're definitely at first glance kind of rattling. Uh, remember how God says about Jericho, he says about that city, he says, no survivors, in fact, don't keep anything. Everything is to be destroyed. Every garment, every gold, every person, it, no survivors. But then this happens in Joshua chapter 2. In Joshua chapter 2, um, the, the spies are, are, are interacting with this woman in the city named Rahab. And, and she says to the spies, now please swear to me by the Lord that you will also show kindness to to my father's family because I showed kindness to you. Remember, God's word is they're all, they're not, nobody's supposed to survive. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father, my mother, brothers, sisters, and all who belong to him. I mean, if you're thinking, if you're thinking it's like, it's just like Rahab. No, you're talking a, a Rahab's ex, a whole extended family from her, from her father and, and then and all the kids and all the grand, you know, it's like, it, this is a, hu, a large group of people here and all who belong to him and save us from death. The men answered her, we will give our lives for yours. If you don't report our mission, we will show kindness and faithfulness to you when the Lord gives, gives us the land. And that's what they do later. They make a promise to this woman. And remember, this is before, this promise is in the past. This promise is made before they've crossed the Jordan River. The promise was made before their Gilgal moment, even. But this promise made in the past needs to be remembered and kept so that they can continue, the nation can still have God's favor and blessing as they move forward. Have you made a promise to your parents? Have you made a promise to your spouse or to your friends or someone you love? Have you given them your word? Okay, remember and be prepared to keep it as you move forward into this new year. Maybe membership commitments. Maybe you've made some membership commitments. You're like, oh yeah, we got a members meeting this week on Thursday, and, and uh, are you a member? Okay, keeping the membership. We do have one Thursday, right? Right, yeah, yeah, good. Uh, uh, are we a member? Are we keeping those commitments? Uh, you know, great. The second get ready question from Joshua is what promises have you made to God and, and people that you need to remember and fulfill in this next season? Question three, question three, what plans and guidance does Jesus have for you this year? It's part of the get ready. Jesus, what, what plans and guidance do you have for me this year? Again, I'm so happy that we start our year with, with, with fasting and seeking Jesus for guidance, his guidance, his priorities for us. In chapter five of Joshua, uh, Joshua encounters the commander of the angel armies and we see that Yahweh gives him very specific guidance. Unusual guidance even for their first battle at Jericho. It says this in chapter 6, verse 2. It says, Yahweh said to Joshua, Look, I have handed Jericho, its king, and its best soldiers over to you. March around the city with all the men of war circling the city one time. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the ark, but on the seventh day, march around the city seven times while the priests blow the ram's horn when there is a prolonged blast of the horn and you hear its sound. Have all the troops give a mighty shout. Then the city wall will collapse and the troops will advance each man straight in, straight ahead. Getting ready means getting seeking. Getting ready means getting seeking any specific plans, any specific guidance that Jesus might have for you. How do you do that? Well, you're going to need to slow down, and you're going to need to make space to listen to Jesus. Sadly, you can't force this one. Jesus, you got three minutes. Go. <laughs> it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't quite work that, that way. You've got to want to hear from Jesus and make the space to hear from Jesus. Getting ready for you, some of you might mean, I need to re-strategize my mornings, 
or I need to re-strategize my evenings so that I have space in case Jesus wants to say something to me this day. Some of you need to get out of your houses. It's too much chaos in your homes, and you just need to be like, okay, I need to go for a prayer walk for a little bit. I just need to get out. I need to, I need to spend time in, in quiet, away from the tech, away from the TV, away from the peoples. Um, you know, have a strategy for, for listening to Jesus. Listening to Jesus and taking that time to slow down is often the difference between a Jericho victory moment and a Gibeon embarrassment moment. In chapter 9, the Gibeonites came to Joshua, and Joshua did not seek God's guidance about the Gibeonites, and so he got tricked and duped, and they gave away what, what is probably one of the greatest cities in all of the land of Israel. And they, 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 didn't, they never were able to take it. They, they gave it away because they were tricked. What does getting ready look like for you? Maybe it means building in your life and reassessing how is my slow down for Jesus time going? Do I have space constantly for, for getting away and for listening? Getting ready means giving, getting, making space for seeking God. That's the question number three. Question number four. What perspective shift do you need to make as you approach this next year? What perspective shift? Now, <clears throat> obviously, in the book of Joshua, God's people were called to be strong and very courageous. They, they were called to be ready for the battles that were ahead. It was going to be a new era. There's going to be battles, and they were not supposed to be in a mindset of shrinking back to fear, but, but being brave as they approach the challenges ahead. And in the same way, men and women, in this, is, this year we've got to be especially strong and very courageous as we, walk, as we walk into the year ahead. I mean, look at it. It doesn't look like it's going to be very easy, at least out of the gate here. Nobody is looking at 2021 thinking, yay, right? Yay, more lockdown. I'm not hearing that very much. Yay, yay, um, this is, this is going to be super fun. The virus is more contagious. Yay. No, I'm not hearing that. I'm, I'm not hearing, yay, schools are closed, except for my 14-year-old. Um, but, but other than that, nobody's like, yay. Uh, this, is, this is just not what people are thinking. But, but as the people of Jesus, getting ready means uh, making a perspective shift to approach this year with faith, with courage, with hope, and, and not giving in to, to fear and worry and anxiety. And I know many of you have, been, uh, have felt very taken, taken off uh, throne by this last year. Remember the story in Joshua, though. Remember the story in Joshua <clears throat> after, after they'd gotten spiritually realigned at Gilgal, after they had remembered and kept their promises to Rahab, after they'd heard from God about his specific plans and purposes connected to Jericho, after all of that, they come to Ai, or Ai. Right? They, they came to Ai, and, and they expected victory and breakthrough. But instead, they, 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 they kind of crashed in defeat. They didn't kind of crash. They crashed in defeat. And, and we read this in Joshua chapter 7. It says, uh, in verse 4, So about 3,000 men went up there to Ai, but they fled from the men of Ai. They, the men of Ai struck down about 36 of them and chased them from outside the city gate to the quarries, striking them down on the desert, a descent. As a result, the people lost heart. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening, as did the elders of Israel. They all put dust on their heads. Okay, there was sin. We know that from the story. And the nation kind of crashed. The perspective needed as we get ready to face the year ahead is, yes, we're to approach the year with courage. We're supposed to be spiritual ready, but also we want to approach the year with the determination to be persistent, come what may, persistent even if we crash, personally and individually. There's a good chance you're, you might have a bad moment this year. 
Uh, you, 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 maybe some of you will fall back into sin. May it never be, but, but maybe, maybe some will fall back into sin. Maybe some of you will have a faith crisis this year. May it never be. May it not happen. But, but maybe, maybe some of you will have a life crisis. Something big will happen in your life and a lot of upheaval. And, 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 and maybe you'll find yourself in a place where you just sort of want to give up. Getting ready means getting, getting ready to get back up again when you, when you come to those times. We may not navigate this year perfectly, but let's get ready to be uh, navigating it with persistency. Making that commitment now. If that if we ever wake up and we find that we've messed up. If we ever wake up and we, and we find that we were off track in, in our life and we've, we've veered away. That we'll quickly be determined to get back right with God and then get going again. They, they had Jericho, but they, they weren't supposed to stop at the failure of the second city. They needed, to get, they needed to deal with what they needed to deal with and then keep going. Keep going to have all that God had for them. That's what they do at Ai. But they got back on track. Now, I wonder if some of you, actually, as we turn into 2021 right now, if you're right now at an Ai moment, where you, you sort of crashed last year, and it's time to get ready for 2021. It's time to get back up again. It's, it's time to get back right with Jesus again and to get back to his plans and purposes for you and for the year to come. I'm not saying this year is going to be easy. In fact, in my dream a few weeks ago, I got the real sense that the enemy is coming, like in John 10.10, 10, where he, the enemy is coming to steal and to kill and destroy, that the enemy's agenda as we roll into this year is to continue to steal, to kill, and destroy. The enemy has plans to keep doing that, but I'm calling us to get ready, to stand strong in the evil day. In my dream, I saw these like, Mm, kind of a Native American Viking ancient warriors rushing down. You know, they, they all look nothing like each other, but like that. Um, rushing, rushing down um, just with, with, you know, the battle axes, and rushing into this village to, to kill and destroy. And, and I, was, I was calling out, like, get ready, get ready. The enemy is coming. Get, wake up. The enemy is coming. Get ready to fight. And you know what happened in the dream? Most people just didn't even move. Like they just couldn't be bothered to get up. They, they couldn't be bothered. It just they want to st stay by the campfire and just just apathetic, too too worn out, too worn out to to get up. A few people in the dream started moving, but they were going way too slowly. The, the enemy was rushing. The enemy was coming, and they just they just couldn't find any motivation to really have any urgency to get to get ready. And I just I was like, you're going to get swept away, but there's urgency. And, and when it comes to the spiritual reality and what I'm calling to us as a church, may that not be true to, with us. Let's not be apathetic in this moment. The call is to get ready. We can see the challenges in the year ahead. We can see now how to prepare ourselves. God's got good things for us. He's got answered prayers coming, but there's also battles coming. So let's get ready, and, and not, let's not just get ready over time. Let's get ready now. Let's go for it. What does that look like for you? What do you need to do to get ready for the year ahead? The challenge is to answer the question. What does get ready look like for you? Now, I can't encourage you enough to join the elders to join the leadership of the church, to join the leadership teams, to, to be a part of the fasting week in, in, a, in a week from now, to be writing down the things in advance. Uh, even if you don't have the cards, I do hope you can get the cards, but even if you don't have the cards, to write down things that you are going to be praying and fasting and seeking God for. Uh, again, I, I, I want you to be prepared to, to engage in this, in this fasting week more than any other year maybe because of the, the urgency of the moment, because of the crisis of the moment, and because of uh, the, the path that God's calling us to walk and to be prepared here. Uh, again, I have a, a podcast on fasting coming out uh, tomorrow. I have, I'm teaching on it uh, next week. There's a brochure that we're going to try to make available online. Um, yeah, get ready to, to get ready with a week of fasting. We'll talk more about that next week. Work through those four questions from today and hear the call. God has a mission and purpose. 
God has a mission and purpose for you in 2021. Be strong. Be courageous. Let's get ready. All right, let me pray for you. Spirit of Jesus, strengthen the weary. Strengthen the weary now in the name of Jesus. Accelerate the answers to prayers. Bring that breakthrough swiftly now. Let that which has been blocked be unblocked. And God, awaken our souls again for this new year so that we can be uh, mighty in faith and deeds in the year ahead. Lead us clearly in Jesus' name. Amen.